Hi, everyone. Welcome again to another special episode of the UCHA podcast. Today, our guest is Li Xuan Tai. He is a graduate student here at UCLA um, in uh, electrical engineering. And we're going to talk to him a little bit about what exactly his research is about. But first, um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, how you found out about the co-op and what made you decide to come here? Oh, actually, I heard about the co-op from my friend, uh, from a lab mate. And he told me that there's a really nice place to near. Uh, this, it's the co-op and it's quite close to campus and it offers meals and it, it has a very low rent. So I just decided to come here and join my friends. Yeah, and uh, actually, I used to live in Weyburn Terrace, which is a graduate student's apartment. But that is too costly, it's, which costs uh, 1,400 per month. And I, my, uh, and it goes up my income cannot afford this, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> the cost of living is the main reason for me. So and, how long have you been uh, living at the co-op now? Uh, for nine months actually cool cool and uh what's your chore shift right now yeah i work in the kitchen yeah how do you uh like working in the kitchen i seen um as a grad student um do you feel like having to work a shift um is a lot of uh, extra burden on you with your other responsibilities or what do you think about that aspect of the co-op well because i'm pretty busy with my own research because so I usually like have someone else to feel, for, fulfill the chores for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Um, so I want to ask you now a little bit more about not just what brought you to the co-op, but uh, what brought you to LA and UCLA specifically? Um, did you decide UCLA over other schools for your graduate studies or what brought you here? Well, the main reason is, uh, is my advisor, who, who is uh, Professor Ken Wang. Uh, and he's a very uh, productive and very uh, uh, excellent professor. And he has a very large group with many uh, successful uh, past graduate students. And a lot of, uh, he has published a lot of good papers and a lot of good instruments as well. So, and he offers, offered me a very good uh, PhD position. So that's the main reason I came here. And uh, for some other reasons, uh, like uh, I prefer living in urban areas. I like having a lot of restaurants, having a lot of museums. And so that's why I prefer uh, UCLA to some other schools like Cornell. <laughs> I was admitted to Cornell, yeah. And also like the weather here, the California's weather is so nice. I cannot, it's always sunny, yeah. Awesome, yeah. That's definitely one of the attractive things about LA. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so um, before I ask you a little bit more about what you study right now, for your PhD, did you come in with a master's or like how, uh, what got you into doing research and like why did you decide to do a PhD in general? Well, cause I'm pretty interested in research cause I'm influenced by my family a lot cause my dad is also a professor at a research institute. And I kind of, uh, when, I was very young, I could see how he did his lab work in his uh, research laboratory and kind of got interested in all of uh, what he did. And so when I went to college, I chose uh, electrical engineering as my major because it's a unique field 
that only not only combines like computing and physics together, which I'm both was quite interesting at the moment. And I went in college, I also tried doing, uh, tried multiple research projects. And I found that the one which I was, I'm currently working on is the one I'm mostly interested in, which is uh, like the, uh, physical electronics, the, uh, the one that combines the physics and the electronics together. Yeah, and uh, that's why I applied to uh, multiple program, PhD programs, and I, the best one I was admitted uh, is UCLA. Awesome. Yeah. So you mentioned Professor Kang Wan, right? Right. I'm a little right. bit familiar with him. Um, oh, right. Yeah, you're right, he has a very big group and kind of studying like I, I guess like a lot of different things right um right right, right. and huh. I, I know he does like multi-feroic magnetoelectric uh material oh, kind exactly of stuff too. <laughs> yeah 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 so Cause... uh what kind of uh out of like all of the things that he uh looks at like what uh what do you study um in his group well basically I the most important thing I'm working on is uh, material growth. Because for all of these experiments, you always need materials, good materials to work on before you can proceed to anything more interesting. Than that. Uh, I work on molecular beam epitaxy growth, which is just uh, evaporating the pure elements out of in the ultra high vacuum chamber like evaporating like terrium or bismuth, and then uh, onto a substrate and it will automatically form into a high crystalline uh, thin film. And that's the main experiment math, experimental method we I'm working on. Yeah, so uh, what kind of materials do we grow? Like uh, topological insulators or uh, magnetic materials like uh, antiferromagnets. So what's the uh, the concept of topological insulator is it's difference between a normal insulator. It's just like the difference between a donut, which has a hole inside and an mm. orange, which has no holes. It's kind of okay. lies in the topology. It's like, it's like, just like how many holes you have in an object. You can continuously deform it without having to break, break in breaking it down. So it can has host a lot of unique properties like it can manipulate uh, spins very efficiently. Uh, the spins are the microscopic uh, structure that can uh, consist of a magnet. It's, uh, the magnet consists of all the spins. Right. So it can be potentially used as a, a good candidate for a uh, non-volatile memory, which means uh, the more memory won't lost its information uh, when you have no power. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's uh, that's the thing I'm working on. Yeah. So I, I have uh, several questions about that. Um, sure, so, sure. So you started off by talking about this method of growing a material, molecular beam epitaxy. So right, exactly. I'm wondering, um, I guess as someone in this electrical engineering lab, do you like see through not just the material growth and I guess maybe optimization of the fabrication of the material, but do you also like fabricate devices and test those devices with your material or are you more interested on just like the, uh, the synthesis method aspect of it? Yes, definitely. We also do fabrication. Uh, but uh, the point is just to uh, see what kind of uh, feedback we can get for the, uh, for, for the growth side. Yes, yes. We, we also do fabrication. And uh, we all, always do the whole bar pattern over our materials, which is just like uh, with uh, two layers of in incoming and outcoming current and just two four sets of probes that can 
used for to uh, to see its longitudinal and hard resistance. Yeah, we usually do this type of fabrication. Yeah. Um. So I yeah, yeah. I work a little bit with some students or have in the past. Um, in Professor Kong Wan's group, and I know they make that kind of device to test like the what you call the voltage control of magnetic anisotropy, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so what not, you're not saying exactly? <laughs> I, well, it's, like, it's what you're saying. Difference. So yeah. you were saying that like this Hallbar device structure, you kind of use it not just for this type of electronic device, but like other types of devices too? Well, uh, my mo major focus is not on uh, device fabrication. Yeah. So uh, those guys that do this uh -huh. uh, stuff like uh, electronic device applications, they have their, their uh, electron, uh, device structures like tunneling, jun magnetic tunneling junctions, yeah. et cetera. Et cetera. And, uh, because the uh, the part I'm working on do not require such a complicated structure, so. <laughs> I see. I see. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you mentioned two things, though. You said first topological insulators, but I think you mentioned another type of material that you focus on. Oh about, yeah, right? I haven't explained it on it. It's yeah, I'll just do ferromagnet. Yeah, sure, no problem. Because a. Like a, in a ferromagnet, uh, which we usually have some experience on, like uh, the iron, or uh, it has a lot of spins, microstructure structures, like the spins, they all align to a single direction. And this causing it to have a, a net magnetization, net, uh, net magnetic moment outside that can exert magnetic force onto objects and that's called a, a ferromagnet. And uh, an antiferromagnet is a in the spins are aligned antiparallel to each other so that they cancel out each other and they has it has a zero magnetic moment. So it can have a lot of uh, it can be potentially used for magnetic memories because it can have a uh, much uh, higher speed, switching speed than ferromagnet. I see. I so see. that's that's why it become a very hot research topic over these years. So yeah. in your in your case, I'm just wondering. Uh, so you can grow these anti ferromagnetic materials with other right. deposition techniques. So uh, just wondering, right. like, well. Uh, what's kind of different about using MBE? Is it just the, that you just need like really high quality materials or what, is there anything um, that you're trying to leverage with this molecular beam epitaxy? And first of all, I think it can produce pretty high quality material and which it can produce single crystals. And its quality is usually better than uh, the materials grown by other methods like uh, CVD, uh, chemical vapor deposition, or a sputtering, magnetic, magnetron sputtering. And it can also produce very uniform and large scale materials, which make it, make it also better than uh, other methods, uh, me mechanical, like mechanical exfoliation. So it's, uh, it has, has a, this unique advantage of combining these two together. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for uh, sharing some of these details about what you research. It sounds very, very interesting. Um, and yeah, thank you for uh, joining us on the pod podcast today. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. See you.